Hi there, I'm the Unschool Twig, and I like analysing game rules. Next on the chopping block for D&D Playtest 5 is the Barbarian. I explained in my last video that the thing I want to see most from these marshals is utility. However, with the Barbarian specifically, I also want to see more desirable features in the mid to high levels. In 2014 5e, after you get Feral Instinct and Instinctive Pants at 7th level, there's really nothing to keep you in Barbarian other than the promise of Primal Champion at 20th level, and maybe your subclass has some good stuff at 10th or 14th. It's incredibly hard to justify staying in Barbarian rather than multiclassing. That's all the preamble I have though, so let's get right into it. Right then, here's the new Barbarian. Right off the bat, I'm going to point out Weapon Masteries. Barbarian starts with 2 and gets an extra one at 4th and 10th levels. I've already talked extensively about this in my Weapon Masteries and Fighter videos, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but I think this is really good. I think Barbarian should maybe go up to 5 Masteries at 15th level, but I'm not too set on that. On to the meat and other meat, because Barbarians don't eat potatoes, Rage. The actual effects of Rage are still the same. You get the same resistances, damage, advantage on strength checks, and concentration restriction. But they've needed to knit up. For example, you can now get Rage damage on an unarmed strike, and it specifies that you can't concentrate at all, rather than just saying that you can't concentrate on spells. In 2014, there were some features like the Trickery Cleric's Invoke Duplicity, which weren't spells, but said they needed concentration as if they were a spell. And it was unclear if Rage stopped you from doing them. The big change, though, is in Rage's end conditions. In 2014, Rage would end after one minute, or if you didn't either attack a hostile or take damage. This has been changed so that Rage is now one round, but can be extended up to ten minutes by making an attack roll, forcing a saving throw, or if you can't do either of those, just using a bonus action. This is so much better, because it puts the duration of Rage entirely in the Barbarian's hands. It also unlocks some additional things, like using your action to dodge, so enemies are less likely to hit you. And even if they do hit you, you'd still have resistance. Alternatively, you could set up Rage before combat, so you don't need to waste your first bonus action on doing it, or use Rage out of combat to help you with strength checks. Brilliant change, Watsy. This is slightly marred, however, by the fact that Rage is now twice per long rest. Theoretically, you could rage through every encounter in a day, assuming that they all take place within the same 2-10 minute time slots. However, when I run D&D, I tend to have encounters spread throughout the entire day. I know there are DMs who have the entire dungeon delve take half an hour though, so this is highly table dependent. In general, I don't like this move away from short rests that we've been seeing on many features. It's apparently because they don't want players asking if they can have a short rest after every encounter, and also to prevent tables which don't frequently short rest from accidentally making short rest classes weaker than intended. But if this is the case, I'd much prefer it if they just gave guidelines on short rests. Say that you can take up to two short rests in a day, or that they must be at least an hour apart, or something like that. That would tell the party and the DM that they should budget in those two short rests, and also that they can't have them back to back. It also kills coffee locking and some other similar abuses, which I don't think is a bad thing. And yes, coffee locking does still work, in fact it's baked into the Sorcerer at 15th level. You don't even have to multiclass. The other first level features are Unarmored Defense, which is functionally identical, and Weapon Mastery, which I've covered in detail elsewhere already. So let's skip forward to Primal Knowledge. You know what I just said about using Rage outside of combat? Here's some more of that. You get a free skill, which is fine, and then also the ability to make any Acrobatics, Intimidation, Perception, Stealth, or Survival check using your strength modifier while you're raging. Because you're raging, you also have advantage on all of these checks. That means that at level 2, with a plus 3 modifier, you can expect an average of 16.82 on skills you aren't proficient in, or an 18.82 on skills you are. You also have a 75% chance of getting at least a 14 or 16 respectively, and a 36% chance or 51% chance of getting at least a 20. This is gigantic. It does suffer from the very limited rage uses though. Thematically, I think it's supposed to be based around the Barbarian's animal instincts, so I kind of think that wisdom is more suitable than strength. However, this is a case where I think making the mechanical decision rather than the thematic decision was a good idea. They even put a little clarifier to explain it. Reckless attack is up next, and this is functionally unchanged. You still get advantage on strength attacks, and enemies get advantage against you. 
Skipping over the subclass and feat for now, fifth level has extra attack, which is just as good as ever, and fast movement, which gives plus 10 foot speed. And right here I'm going to be an obnoxious little git and point out that Watsy messed up their syntax. In the playtest, speed has a capital S. What the hell are you doing, guys? Was this even proofread? How are we supposed to know that this is referring to a mechanic if it doesn't have a capital letter? I guess you could put a little clarifier on it. Maybe call it like a, I don't know, a walk speed or something. That would, that, that would probably help. Moving on from my dumb nitpicks though, we're at 7th level Feral Instinct. This has had the surprised stuff removed and has had Danger Sense's deck save advantage wrapped in. The surprise stuff makes sense. They've changed the prize rules so that now you just get advantage or disadvantage on initiative, rather than getting a free round. On that subject, the Barbarian always has advantage on initiative, so surprising enemies actually doesn't help you at all. At least not mechanically. I'm sure that there's some roleplay stuff that DMs can do. The other benefit here is the deck save advantage. This has been moved from 2nd level to 7th, but has had a slight buff. You now have an advantage on all deck saves, whereas previously you had to see the source of the save. This function actually didn't come up all that often in my experience, just because of the nature of deck saves, but it is welcome streamlining. Moving this back to 7th level is ultimately a nerf, however, which I think I'm fine with. Primal Knowledge is a welcome replacement at 2nd level, and 7th still feels decent for this. It's still a good feature. 9th level is Indomitable Might, which says that you can use your Strength score in place of a Strength check if you roll below it. By 9th level, your Strength is probably either 19 or 20. This means that either way, assuming you're raging, you have a 49% chance of activating Indomitable Might if you're not proficient, or a 25% chance of activating it if you are. That seems okay to me, but it's not exactly an exciting feature. It also just gets worse as your proficiency bonus increases. Moving on to Brutal Critical at 11th level, it's been changed so that rather than rolling an extra die, you get to add your Barbarian level to the damage of a crit. Assuming you always use Reckless Attack, this gives you an overall damage bump of 1.07 per attack at 11th level. It increases a little bit as you level up, but by 20th level it's still just 1.95 per attack. This is extremely mediocre. Barbarian needs something more than just Brutal Critical. It's not enough. I'd really like to see some sort of AoE attack here. That could distinguish the Barbarian from the other Marshals quite a bit. Maybe it would be something like Reckless Rush. You make an attack against every enemy within your reach. That is damage splitting, however a Raging Reckless Barbarian with a plus one D10 weapon and no other buffs is still expecting 14.33 damage per enemy, which is about half of what a Fireball is expecting with a 60% chance to fail. And they can then also use their mastery property against every single enemy they hit. That's not written here though, so oh well, we can always just ask for it. 13th level brings Persistent Rage, which is two levels earlier. This essentially now says that you don't need to use a bonus action to extend your rage anymore. It's not very strong. 15th level Relentless Rage now gives you HP equal to double your Barbarian level when you use it, rather than just one. This is actually a significant buff because of the Barbarian resistances. If you're fighting something that does bludgeoning, piercing or slashing, this is effectively 60 HP. Slightly more actually because odds round down. That's not too bad, but is it a 15th level feature? Eh, probably not. It's the best thing that we've had in a while though. 17th level Raid Resurgence is a welcome, I guess? It fixes the limited rages problem at least, but it's very late, and I'd probably just prefer it if this wasn't needed in the first place. Finally, 18th level is Primal Champion, and 20th level is Epic Boon. Primal Champion gives plus 2 plus 2 in Strength and Con, and then Epic Boon gives another plus 2 in one of them. That makes up the full capstone of the 2014 Barbarian, which I'm actually fine with. Like previous classes though, please don't specify the stats that Epic Boon must replace Watsy. So, Barbarian's core class. They got some really nice low level improvements in Rage, Weapon Masteries and Primal Knowledge. But I still think that everything after 7th level is fairly easy to give up. Barbarian needs more than this Watsy. Also, please, please bring back short rest features. Now then, Berserker. In my opinion, this was 2014 Barbarian's second worst subclass, just ahead of the Battle Rager, which I think even Watsy have forgotten about, given that it didn't get a reprint alongside the Bladesinger. I think that the two subclasses in the 2014 PHB were meant to fill specific roles. Totem was meant to be the defensive team support subclass, and Battle Rager was meant to be the offensive damage dealer. The exhaustion on Frenzy absolutely killed it though, 
and there were some features like intimidating presence which just kind of didn't really work because what barbarian has charisma investment? I wanted to see this berserker really dish out the damage. At third level you get frenzy which has been entirely redesigned. Rather than getting a bonus action attack, you now deal a few extra d6s of damage equal to your rage damage mod against the first target you attack each turn when you use reckless attack. Let me say that again. This is against the first target you hit. This is not the first time you hit. It's not once per turn. If you make three hits against the same target, you add those d6s three times. To put it another way, this isn't like sneak attack. This is like Hunter's Mark. This is a huge damage bump. Let's look at a 5th level Polar Master Berserker. They can make 3 attacks, all with advantage, against the same enemy. 2 at 1d10 plus 2 plus 6, and 1 at 1d4 plus 2d6 plus 6. That's an expected 47.46 damage per round. Compare that to an old Polar Master plus Great Weapon Master Barbarian. They did 36.83. This is an enormous increase. Let's compare it to another benchmark, a 2014 fighter using crossbow expert, sharpshooter and archery fighting style at 20th level. They do 5 attacks per round and can expect 42.5 damage. The 5th level berserker is outperforming the 20th level fighter. This is the feature I wanted to see from a berserker. So after that absolute bombshell, level 6's mindless rage comes along and neatens up the charm and frighten immunity, now ends the conditions rather than suppressing them. Nice. 10th level retaliation has moved down from 14th level, which is welcome, and now also allows unarmed strikes to work. I'd like to see it work within your reach rather than just 5 feet, but oh well. It's also worth pointing out that this probably doesn't work with Frenzy, since you can't reckless attack on a reaction, unless it's on your turn. Finally, 14th level brings Intimidating Presence, which has been buffed a bit, but has moved back from 10th level. This is now a 30 to 60 foot AoE Frighten, and it's now based on your strength instead of your charisma. It has been limited in use, however. You can only use it once per long rest, and you can spend rages to do it again. This is a pretty solid feature. I don't think it's good enough to persuade me to go through the slog of features after 7th level, but if the main class was buffed, I could see this being a pretty good payoff. So yeah, Berserker got big buffs and is now kinda good. Like, flex tape good. Almost as good as SK, who signed up for my Patreon. As a Patreon, SK can get early access to all of my videos, and gets to make me publicly compliment him. You can get that too if you want. So that's that. At low levels, Barbie is better than ever. But they still need some mid to high level chase features to make it a desirable single class. Next up, I'm probably going to do the Warlock, and this one will be a bit special. The Warlock is so incredibly different from before that I can't give it an honest overview by just reading it. So I've made an actual 1-20 Warlock build which I'm going to present alongside my analysis. Even better, for my home game this week we're going to do a 7th level playtest, and one of my friends has agreed to play this Warlock for me. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe! I'd also really really appreciate it if you could share this video with a friend. Bye!